Welcome back to another episode of Frankie D. Crafter. I've been asked a lot to do the video with the houses. Well, I'm doing the video with the houses. Best thing, they're made out of milk cartons. Now obviously the first thing you're gonna need is the milk carton or a carton in general. But from here we have a few options actually. For the lumber, you can use a Proxen hot wire cutter. If you don't have one, you can purchase one through my affiliate link in the description below. And you're supporting the channel at no extra cost to you. As a matter of fact, I have all my equipment, material, tools, blah blah blah, all down there in the description below. So if you got some extra time and you wanna check some of that stuff out, go ahead and do so. Alright, now I'm going to be a bad salesman after I just try to sell you on this Proxon. If you don't have a Proxon, that's okay. Don't worry, there's a cheap way to do this. It's just a little bit more work and it doesn't come out as good. But, I mean, it's still good. It's still good. You're not going to complain at the end of the project. What you see me doing here is measuring strips of half an inch and cutting them out. Cut as many as you want. I suggest that you cut more than you actually need. And when you're done, just strip off the paper from one side. I'm gonna go texture these outside. I hate this dust in my working space. So I'll be right back. When I make these houses, I make three different variations. The first one stands at a little bit over two inches tall. The next one is a little bit over four inches tall. And the other one is a little bit over seven and a half inches, I think it was. And we're gonna be working on the middle one for this project. Alright, so first we're going to measure about 4 inches from the top. I'm just going to take this little tool right here and just square everything off. Now get your good blade and cut it out. You also want to cut the plastic at the top. And that middle top section as well. Alright, so we need to make the bottom of this strong. I'm going to cut this out right here. And I barely did any measurements. A lot of this is kind of just like by eye or just placing the piece and cutting out the, the size that I want from it. So don't get caught up on measurements. So the best thing about the mill carton process of making your houses is that all the measurements are always going to be the same. So I ended up making these keys for it. You know, the one for the roof, the one for the side, and that other small piece for the roof is actually for the for the half and half carton. You can tell that I'm not too concerned about the measurements here. I know how it's gonna come out. That's what the key is for, you know. So, so I measure two pieces and cut them out. And then I do the same for the little triangle ones. Let's just put these away for now. I don't wanna lose them. And let's continue on with the project. Because of the weird angle where you're going to be putting the triangles, we're going to cut off a little bit off the edges on the corners. Using the hot glue gun, we're going to fill in that gap. As a matter of fact, let's start gluing everything together. Make sure you get a good amount of hot glue on every corner. This step right here you probably don't have to do. I did it just because. I don't know why. But I thought I'd show you anyways. Now we're going to start putting the bottom. And this one's a little bit tricky. You're going to actually get the hot glue in the gap. And then kind of just push it down. And wait until it cools down. It might be a little bit hot. So be careful. So as you can tell, when we use the foam board, it's not as good as when we use the pink styrofoam. The detail is not as deep or as defined, but we're still gonna make this work. Now take one of your long strips and cut it in half, the long way. Now I could take a second and measure all of these out, but I'm gonna roll, I'm gonna continue. And as you can tell right here, I'm not even measuring anything, I'm just going. Now these specific ones that we cut in half, we're going to put on the sides where 
the roof comes down, right? And on the front and back of the house, we're gonna use the half inch one. Now I'm risking it here. You've seen how easy the paper peels off on these. And I'm using the paper side to glue this onto it. If you want to be safe, take the paper off and then be very careful while gluing it. You can even glue it with something like tacky glue. But I just like how fast hot glue is. So I'm risking it here by adding that one side of paper because we know how weak that side is and how easy it peels off. Okay, so you're gonna wanna do that to every single side. Just remember to use the half an inch on the front and the back and on the sides use the quarter. At this point, you just wanna frame the top of the house. Then we're gonna add a division for the attic. From here so I don't get boring and just say glue this here, glue this here. I'm just gonna let it play and I'll get back to you guys when it comes to building the spots for the windows and the door. And I'm back. Alright, I'm sticking to not measuring things and just eyeballing everything. So I cut out a piece of foam that I felt was the right size for a door and I have it right in the corner you see it. Here I'm actually gonna test out a wood design that's done with the pen instead of with the wire brush. So we'll see how that comes out. I'm gonna go ahead and glue that piece right above where the door will be. We're going to go ahead and draw the planks onto the door. And to texture this, I'm going to use my wire brush. And we're going to add a few designs to the door using cereal cardboard. And the last touch on the door is going to be a bead for the doorknob. Cool, cool, cool. The door is done and we're gonna pop it right in. Hot glue it. Alright, now we're gonna start framing the door and framing the windows. Let's move on to the roof. All right, we're gonna texture it using a wire brush. Ah, I said I wasn't gonna do this inside, didn't I? Ah, well. And again, I'm not really measuring here. I just wanna make sure they're straight, all right? So don't call me out on this one. But as you can tell, I just kinda choose a width and go with it. I'm not too concerned about it. Now this next step was completely stolen, I mean inspired, by Black Magic Craft. I had some extra grout from actually the floor I'm currently standing on top of and I decided not to let it go to waste. It's still like half the bag left so I decided to put it to good use. You want a pancake kind of like feel to it, the mixture, and then start applying it to all the crevices. As you can tell I have scribbled on the parts that are gonna be the windows just to make sure I don't forget and put the grout on the wrong part. To speed up the process I use this heat gun. I use it so that I can move on and work on the next side. And like I said if you want to get your hands on some of these tools check out my affiliate links in the description below. Another thing you see me doing here is actually kind of adding texture with my fingers before it actually cures. And I'm gonna have to apologize here, Actually, I just noticed this while editing, 
that I don't have the footage from when I cut the roof. That's something I really wanted to talk about because I, I actually use a hot blade instead of just an X-Acto knife. I'll post a picture of the tool I use in here. It's, it's just really good because you can cut at a certain angle effortlessly. It, I mean, you've seen, you've seen how heat goes through styrofoam now. This is a very thin blade, so you're able to get some, like, detailed cuts. It, it's such a shame that I lost the footage. I don't know what happened. I won't let you down, fam. I'ma do it. Okay, so when you cut the roof, you want to make sure to cut at an angle to make it look like it's actually overlapping. We're, we're really just making an illusion here. So I went back to the crafting table because I thought this was an essential part that I wanted to show you from the build. It would just suck if I kind of punked out and not gave you the full tutorial on this. So you can see this tool really... I'm, I'm cutting through this like butter. And on some of the gaps you might not want them to be very thin. So you might go ahead and use your pen and make those a little bit wider. As you can see up here on the very last tiles at the very roof of the a top of the roof, I used that cereal cardboard. From here we primer with black Mod Podge mix. Then I go ahead and put a whole dry brush white on the whole thing. Then I use my favorite paints, Dalarani. I think the paint's called Red Earth. I go ahead and apply it on the roof. Then I use whatever brown on the lumber and on the door. Then I use a light vanilla for the walls. I darken up the windows to make sure they're completely black, sort of. I dry brush the wood with gray. I add a spot of white to the windows. I go over those spots with yellow. And then just finish it off with a little bit of orange. And that same orange I use on the roof to add some highlights. I go over the walls with a brown wash. I make sure to only get it on certain pieces of the wood, not everywhere. I don't want to lose any of the highlights. And then I take a napkin and grab all the extra from the walls to get the effect that you see on screen right now. Now the material you see here is a plastic canvas. The company that makes this is called Daris. And this is gonna be one of the cheapest ways to make windows. Now you don't have to glue them, you know, straight up and down like me. You can angle them to give them different effects. But I think they're very successful when it comes to mimicking the windows of a house. Now let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons on how I decided to tackle this project. Now the first thing I want to tackle or mention is using the pink styrofoam versus using the styrofoam board. The big difference here is the detail. And I don't know if this detail right here is good enough for you. If you don't mind it, then go ahead and do it. The other thing I want to mention is that top plank that's right above the door. I do like how it came out. I don't think I painted well enough over it because you can still see the pen. So if I would have made a better effort and done that a little bit better, I think you could potentially build the whole lumber around the house in that same style. And I think it would actually maybe come out better than if you were to scratch it with the wire brush. And the last thing I want to mention about the front of this house is if you notice on the bottom corner of the left, you see that actually some of my grout fell off and this is because I was working on it before it completely dried and I just took advantage of it anyways it wasn't like a big deal to me I didn't rush to clean it or fix it I was just like you know what I'm just gonna make it look like there's something underneath that and I went with the little mistake turned it into a happy accident but if you think this is gonna be an issue you can always make the base of your house go outward to the point where you do make a little square or platform to keep all your grout in now my favorite part about the build has to be the roof there's something about the roof I really really love and I think it's a mixture of how I go about carving into it and how I paint it and if you guys follow the channel, you will know that I love making things colorful and I feel like in the house, it's hard to get away with making something look colorful, but I can get away with it 
with the roof. Thank you very much again for watching this episode of Frankie D Crafter. You know, if you like the video, hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, you better subscribe. You're gonna miss out on a lot of projects I got coming up. And they're better than this, believe it or not. And if you want to support the channel, go ahead and take a look at my Patreon page. And if that's not your thing, uh, like I mentioned before, the affiliate links, it's no extra cost to you. You don't even really have to buy anything I sent you there to buy. You can literally just click on the link and go on with your shopping, any shopping you want to do. And it, it works out that way as well. So, thank you very much guys before I start rambling and talking on and on and on. I'll let you go. Stay crafty. See you on the next one.